The previous sections have been about preparing your clusters for virtual machines. This section is the first of two that are devoted to the virtual machines that your cluster will be hosting. For most functions, you have the option of working either in a graphical interface or within PowerShell. In this section, we will only work with the graphical tools. This first video is going to be about the creation and removal of virtual machines in your cluster. The next video will work through the memory options available to virtual machines and how to change them. The third video will be devoted to working with the virtual hard drives attached to a virtual machine. The fourth video will cover virtual adapter settings. The final video will discuss changing the automated actions that your cluster will take with virtual machines. Before you create any virtual machines, it's a good idea to change the default location. If you don't, then you'll likely find that some files are placed in non-highly available locations, which means you'll have to do some extra work later to relocate them. To change the default location, open Hyper-V Manager. Right-click on the System to Change and click Hyper-V Settings. The first two items are the ones we're interested in. The topmost one selects where virtual hard disks will go, while the second one is for all other files. For this video, we're going to place everything on a specific cluster shared volume. Make sure that you do this for all hosts. And now, we're ready to create a virtual machine. Just right-click the host, select New, and then Virtual Machine. This will start the wizard. Begin with the name we want for the virtual machine. You'll notice the default location is the one that you specified, and you're allowed to override it here. On the next screen, choose the VM generation. This video series assumes you know the differences, so you'll want to do some research on your own if you aren't familiar with it. The safest option is to choose Generation 1. On this screen, we choose the startup memory and whether or not the VM will use dynamic memory. We cannot adjust the minimums and maximums here. Since we're creating a new virtual machine, always use at least enough memory to install the operating system. We'll talk more about memory in the next video. The wizard will create a single network adapter. You can attach it to an existing virtual switch here if you like. The type of adapter will depend on what you choose on a later screen. Now, you need to choose what to do for the primary hard drive. The first option allows you to create a new one. Be aware that this wizard will always create a dynamically expanding disk. If you want it to be fixed, you'll have to convert it. By default, it creates a VHDX. If you want the VHD format, just eliminate the X and the wizard will know what to do. As you can see, your other options here are to connect an existing disk or don't connect to one at all. This screen is a little misleading as it doesn't actually install an operating system at all. All it really does is connect media for you. You can choose to do nothing. You can attach the physical DVD drive on the host. You can connect an ISO image, you can attach a virtual floppy image, or you can set the VM to boot from the network. If you choose to do this last option, you'll get the legacy network adapter if the VM is Generation 1. For any other option, you get a synthetic adapter, which has much better performance. And that's it. Just click Finish, and your VM will be created. This virtual machine is on highly available storage, but it's not highly available. We need Failover Cluster Manager for that. With your cluster connected, right-click the Roles node and click Configure Role. Skip to the Role Type screen and highlight Virtual Machine. Check Machines to be converted. Be aware that you can do this while the virtual machine is running. That's really all there is to this wizard. If you have any component of the virtual machine on non-highly available storage, you'll get a warning on this screen. Make sure you correct that as quickly as possible. You can use Failover Cluster Manager to perform all of this in a single wizard. Right-click on Roles, go to Virtual Machine, and click New Virtual Machine. Pick the node that you want to create the VM on. After that, the wizard is just like the one in Hyper-V. Only difference is the result in which the VM is already highly available. Removing virtual machines in the GUI is always a multiple-step process. First, you have to remove the highly available components from Failover Cluster Manager. This is a simple matter of locating the virtual machine in the Roles node, right-clicking it, and clicking Remove. This doesn't change the virtual machine in any way. It just makes it not highly available anymore. The VM can even be turned on while this is done and it won't be interrupted. Now, switch over to Hyper-V Manager. Right-click the VM and click Delete. The virtual machine is deleted, but any hard disk files are not. If you won't need them anymore, 
Just navigate to them in Windows Explorer and delete them like any other file. Now you're right back where you started, but you know how to create and delete virtual machines. Make at least one before the next video as it's going to show you how to make changes to the memory settings.